Coffee. I want to welcome everyone this morning to church. How's everyone this morning? Yay! All right. Oh, we're missing some of our in person crowd. We hope they will join us as uh, the service gets going. A uh, warm welcome to everyone online this morning. Just want to check in. Are you hearing me clearly online? Yep, I see some thumbs up, that's excellent. We want everybody to be able to hear us all indeed. Uh, just before we begin, uh, we have some lots of special things that are planned for this morning uh, that are a little different than we sometimes do, which is good. Uh, but I do have to report uh, just a, yet another bit of sad news for our, our wider community. Uh, we did hear the sad news of the death of Diane Davey uh, this past week. Diane is the daughter of Nicholas and Minerva Plaskin. And uh, Diane had been living with cancer for quite a while, and uh, that journey came to an end uh, this past week. So we do want to keep Minerva and uh, Nick in our prayers and their family uh, this morning. Also, uh, who's getting ready for Valentine's? Hey, many of us are. Uh, we've had a lovely Valentine's karaoke that happened uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, a good crowd of us came out and sang our hearts out. And for those of you that couldn't make it, uh, we're planning to do another karaoke again, we hope, before too long. It was wonderful. Uh, and also, we'll be saying a little bit more about Mardi Gras in just a moment, uh, but FFF has already celebrated Mardi Gras uh, and a little bit of Valentine's as well. So we're getting into the spirit here of things, uh, Trinity and Anjou United Churches, and that is a blessing indeed. Um, just, all right. So, now, some of you at here know that 
uh, this is a special day in the church. And I'm just going to come down here. So anybody know why today is a special day in the church? Oh, good. Okay, I get to answer all the questions. Well, uh, we mark a change of Christian seasons with this particular Sunday, right? So we move from, this is the last Sunday of the season of Epiphany, and what's the next coming season? Lent, right. And when does Lent start? It starts this coming Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. We're going to be here in this sanctuary at 7.30 uh, to mark that occasion. We move from a season of light to a season that is more, uh, let's say, a little more cloudy, a little more somber, um, a little bit more a season of shadows. Now, it's also the time for Mardi Gras. Now, who knows what the word Mardi Gras means? It means Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras. Tuesday, that's fat. It's the French for, for Fat Tuesday. And why do, we, why do we celebrate Fat Tuesday? Anybody know? Yes, uh, people often, uh, traditionally, when Lent begins, it's meant to be a season of, of penitence where we give up some of the pleasures of life. So uh, folks in the kitchen would uh, use up all of their, their oil, their sugar, their butter, all of those good, yummy, fat things that we love to eat. Uh, and, and the Lenten diet would be just a little bit more, more plain because the focus for Lent is going to be on our faith, on the walk of Jesus, and how we walk with him. Okay, now in New Orleans, okay, this is the big moment, everybody. In New Orleans, who's ever, anyone been to New Orleans for Mardi Gras? Not for Mardi Gras, okay. Well, I would invite you, I think everybody has a mask, if you feel comfortable, if you would like to wear your mask, and folks at home, if you have a mask uh, that you uh, have in a drawer or on a wall, feel free to take that mask out and uh, to put it on as part of this particular Sunday because uh, Mardi Gras is that, that big party that happens in New Orleans but other places as well. Uh, again, to mark the last day of, of parties and fun and life and then moving into Lent for Ash Wednesday. Now, this is also a special Sunday every year because it is Transfiguration Sunday. Now, who knows what Transfiguration means? Do you know? No? It means, it means, it's, it's this moment of transfiguration, transformation. We, we realize something new about Jesus in the story that we're going to hear, and we hope in doing so we learn something new about ourselves as well. So it's a very special, mysterious time. Uh, it's transfiguration is not so much about our heads. It's really about our hearts. It's about how we feel about ourselves and about God and about faith and about this love, this, this love that is unconditional. God loves us without conditions, right? How exciting, how wonderful. We want to feel that deep down in our, our bodies and our minds and our souls. We want to be so excited that we're going to dance and sing all day, every day. Imagine you come into your teachers at school and you're dancing and you're singing. Yeah, and then you get thrown out to the principal's <laughs> office, right? That's okay, though, because faith is so amazing. We don't care. We don't care. The principal's going to have to hear what we have to say about this wonderful faith making us come alive. 
So we're going to do something amazing right now. We're going to uh, rise as Abel, and the choir is going to lead us in a first verse of this wonderful hymn, Gather Us In. We're all going to join in and sing with the choir as they come in. As we learn the tune and see the words, uh, let us gather in this transfiguration, transforming light as we feel the love of Christ with us. Good morning, Sarah and Tristan. Good to see you. We're all gathering here together in this moment. There's Eric, and oh my God, what else? Who else is going to come and join us? I don't know. But Julia, you better start playing, playing because I'm just going to keep talking if you don't. Let us rise as able, friends. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreamings. Brought here, did you in the light of this day? Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now, and we shall awaken. We shall arise to the sound of our names. Everybody. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history. Call to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Transformed by this beautiful faith that we have in Jesus Christ. Every day and in every way, being reminded of God's light and love, being reminded of our yearning for peace in the Middle East, peace in all places where war is wreaking havoc, is disrupting so many lives. We hear nowadays that uh, as many as 27,000 people have been killed in Gaza, many of them uh, children and women. And of course, the Israelis who have lost their lives Ukrainians who continue to face uh, bombing. Uh, we were praying about that in our prayer group yesterday. Uh, it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And, and we light this special candle so that God will uh, be, be talking to the leaders of these nations, uh, the people trying to negotiate a settlement um, no doubt a compromise no one will be satisfied with, but, but Lord, we know that the, the killing and the war and the violence uh, and the, must stop. And then the healing of, of these beautiful peoples uh, coming back together in harmony, we pray. It's crazy that we pray this, but we do because we know with God nothing will be impossible. Amen. This is a time for all who would like to come forward to light special candles for the joys that you are celebrating today and for the concerns and the struggles that you know and that the world knows. And I light another candle indeed for the Plaskin family as they miss their dear uh, daughter and sister, uh, Diane. 
uh, please come as you would like. Let us uh, bring more of God's light into this sanctuary with our prayers. Well, maybe this is a new look for the church. I don't know. <laughs> Would you join with me in our call to community and gathering prayer at, in one? Please join in in the lines marked all. Let us pray. Compassionate God, who sent Jesus Christ to deliver us from all manner of injustice and inequality, create in us new hearts and enlarged visions to see the image of God in every person of every background, race, and ethnicity. May we be generous in our love of others as we work towards ending misunderstanding, racism, and injustice. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And in English and then in French, we offer these special words as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux et celles qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous laisse pas entrer en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal. Car c'est à toi qu'appartient le règne, la puissance et la gloire pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Now, I understand our uh, young people know this uh, wonderful song, Open the Eyes of My Hearts. This is a different version of it, but I hope they will sing along with a lot of enthusiasm uh, the beautiful gospel hymn, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Uh, and let's rise as Abel and we'll sing along with uh, some friends on the video. Relentless Church, wherever you are, I need you to put your hands on it like this. Come on, yeah. Everybody clap like this, yeah, like this, yeah. We wanna see you, yeah, no. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Just open the eyes of my heart, 'cause I wanna see. Say, I want to see you. Just open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, cause I want to see you. That's our heart today. I want to see you. Wherever you are, let's raise it together. Come on, say. Open the eyes of my heart. Come on, if you want to see him in the midst of the noise, in the midst of the chaos. Come on, just ask him today. Oh, 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 say open the eyes. I want to see it like you see. I want to see you. Say I want to see you. Let's go. To see you. To see Shining in the light, shining in the light of your glory. Just pour out, pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, He's a holy God. Holy. To see you, shining in the light of your glory. This nation, we need you, Lord. Pour out this world needs you, Lord God. Clap those hands if you want to see them. Everybody, clap, 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 Lord. Your heart's desire, God. We just want you and only you. All over the world, let's sing it together. Say, open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. We want your perspective, God. Give us your perspective. Oh, I want to see for my family. I need to see you for my business. Y'all, I need to see you. Come on. See you. Open the eyes. Give us heaven's view today. Say, I want to see you. Oh, say, I want to see you. We got to go today. Help us to see through your lens today, oh God. Help us to see that everything is gonna be alright, and I wanna see you. I wanna, I wanna see you. Oh God, say I wanna see you. 
those hands right here. Say, I want to see you. And amen. You may be seated. All right. So I'd like to invite Janelle to come up with me. Hey, Janelle. Good to see you. We wanted to lift up something that Janelle has had the great fortune of experiencing, which is youth form. So Janelle, why don't you go into the pulpit? And I'm going to be interviewing Janelle as part of our time of learning this morning. Whoops, but I don't want that feedback, so I'll come over here. So Janelle, tell us what, what is Youth Forum? Uh, youth Forum is like... Can everyone hear? Let's make sure you speak right into the mic. Bring it down. Um, youth Forum is like a weekend-long event where like teenagers from all over Canada reunite in like a church where we sleep after the weekend. Wow, that sounds amazing. So when did it take place and where was it held? It was in the beginning of November in Plymouth United Church in Sherbrooke. Okay, so Sherbrooke, Quebec. So was there snow at that time? No, there wasn't any snow yet. No snow. Okay, well, people didn't get that experience. That's too bad. So who was there? It was like uh, teenagers from 12 to 18, but obviously there was Shanna, like the person that organized everything. Okay. And like the older kids, they like help, not, oh, not necessarily like chaperones, but they like choose the theme a few months in advance. Okay, well super. So so how did it work? Like what happened when you got there? And yeah, just how did it all work? Where did you sleep? How did the cooking happen? Well, basically like you arrive on the Friday evening and like you like you eat at home and depending on who your friends are over there, like you bring your sleeping bag and like a bag full of clothes and you decide where you want to sleep in the church. And like usually it's like the adults who make food, but each group, because there are groups since there's always a theme and there's a lot of kids, so they have to make groups for each um, activity. Each group, like for instance in the breakfast, in breakfast time one group has to wash the dishes and at lunch another group has to wash them. Okay, so everybody has to cooperate. Yeah. Oh boy, well that's, getting teens to cooperate, is that easy? It, it is. is, okay. All right, parents at home, you know what you can ask your teens about now. Wow, so how many people were there? Maybe like 40-ish. 40, 40-ish, wow, that's yeah. awesome. That sounds like a great, boost for our church's future. That's wonderful. And what was the theme this year? Building bridges between Christians and Muslims. Oh, wow. Building bridges between Christians and Muslims. And how did that theme evolve? Like, what did you do to uh, address it? Well, on Friday evening, we got there kind of late. So I didn't really know what they were doing. But Saturday morning, we had a Muslim speaker talk about his experience with like um, living in like a white neighborhood at the time when he was like the only person of color. And he was just telling us his story. And after lunch, we went to visit a mosque and like we watched like people pray and yeah. Wow, okay, you went to an actual mosque in Sherbrooke and they were at prayer. What was that like? Um, for me personally, it kind of made me uncomfortable because I feel like if we're like not of the religion, I'm not saying we shouldn't go visit, but we were they were praying, so it was like their sacred time. So maybe it wasn't the right time for us to like mm. just go and watch them. Oh, interesting. But I, I hope uh, you were invited to come. Yeah, we were. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. Showing up unannounced, that would be quite something. But uh, if there was an invitation, 
I, I guess they were glad to have you come because it demystifies, right? If we've never been to something before, we think things about it, but unless we go, we don't really know. And, and it takes that, that mystery out, or, or if we misunderstand what they're doing, then if we go in and see and ask them, uh, was there, were you able to talk with uh, any of the people after? Yeah, at the end, like, the person that invited us, um, we could ask questions. Okay. Oh boy. Do you remember any of the questions? Um, not really. Okay. That's a, lot. That's a couple of months ago. But wow, just think everybody, if you could go walk into a mosque, observe the people at prayer, and just think about the questions that you might want to ask afterwards if there's an invitation to do so. That is awesome. So, so what was your favorite part of the whole thing? Um, my favorite part wasn't necessarily anything that had to do with reform. It was like seeing my friends and making new ones because we don't really get to see each other often since we live like in different parts of Canada, except for the people that live in Montreal. So it was nice to have a weekend where we can all just hang together. Wow, wonderful. Who likes to party with friends? Oh, not every hand's going up. I guess uh, we got a few party poopers here. <laughs> I sure do. Well, that's wonderful. So after all of this, would you want to go to Youth Forum again? I would. And there's going to be one at the end of March. So hopefully I get to go. Okay. So some of our young people here today, you got to get a little bit older. But then we're hoping that Youth Forum is going to be around for a long time so that our young people can experience that fun. I mean, we have like three or five or ten kids young people, youth here, uh, but when you get together, as Janelle is saying, with 40 other people, think of the fun that you can have. Did you play games at all? Uh, uh, we didn't play, well, yeah, some people played games, but like, we had a dance party Saturday evening. Oh, it was fun. We're on theme today, dance party, everybody. Well, that's great, okay. Who remembers the old, uh, you know, you'd have a church lock-in? And you'd, you'd go play hide and seek in the church. Sherry, did we do that here? And it can be tough. We did that too. You did that too? Yeah, we okay. Played so even the youth are not, uh, they're okay about playing. What do you call that, Sherry? Is it hide and seek? Yeah, hide and seek. Hide and seek. Hide and seek. Okay. In a, in a big church like this, you can really hide pretty well. Um, so let's give a big hand to Janelle for sharing her experience. Uh, and yeah, we really want to encourage all of our youth who, who want to go to camp. And we have a Sunday uh, pancake breakfast coming up, a brunch that's all about uh, supporting our BBS. Uh, but there's also the spirit camp. Uh, we want to do everything we can to support younger people finding other y younger people of faith uh, to make friends and, and get to know the faith better. So thank you so much. God bless you. Okay, so oh, we are so happy that Janelle was here. Cherry, do you have something to share? Oh, the Sunday school did something they would like to share. Well, please come and tell us all about it. Good morning. Good morning. So I remember last week we talked about sharing our spiritual gifts. Well, last week in the Sunday school, we went upstairs and, you know, coming up on Wednesday is Valentine's Day and uh, Ash Wednesday. And so the children of the Sunday school and the youth of the Sunday school have made Valentine's cards for everybody here. Wow. So, if you, <laughs> so if you won't mind giving us a second to just get to spread out some love today. So go ahead, guys, spread some love. <laughs> <laughs> Elisa, don't be shy. Go spread some love. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. That is so sweet. That's awesome. Spreading the love is what we like to be about. And our kids are getting involved, and that's super. Oh, 
these are special. When did you make these? Oh, last week. Oh, Tristan, do I get one too? <laughs> Yay! That's beautiful. So I got a little lamb. Anybody get a lamb? Oh, a dog. Oh, they're all different. Penguin, a frog, a little girl. A bunny rabbit. Excellent. Wow. Let's give a big hand for our Sunday school. And I'll just put this right up here so everybody can... Whoop, there we go. Isn't that... Those are pretty. Thank you so much. Now we have a really beautiful song to sing. Amen. We 
we hear again the story of the transfiguration. This year, as the book of Mark retells it, our passage occurs on the heels of the first predictions of Jesus' coming death and resurrection. And then, following some sobering talk, talk of what it takes to follow Jesus. Some of the disciples, they can't believe that after everything they've seen Jesus do, that he could be made to suffer so much. But Jesus, Jesus won't hear of such talk. He tells them they are going to see God's glory revealed in a big way and soon. God will reveal Jesus to them and to us in a new and spectacular way. And one wonders if perhaps Jesus also learns something new about himself. Here is where we pick up our story, reading from Mark 9, 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain peak by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And then a cloud came and overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, He ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Amen. Part of our scripture this morning is the song, Living in the Overflow. Uh, And as you listen and hear, I welcome you to sing along as you get uh, the chorus that uh, repeats. um, and, And feel free to feel what this music does to you.
good way for that to end. Oh, that's beautiful. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be a witness, O God, to your way of love, justice, and faithful walking with us. Amen. All right. If you have a mask and if you wouldn't mind trying it on, uh, we're going to take them off a little bit later in the sermon, but only as you feel comfortable. If they're not comfortable for you, no worries about it at all. So friends, I'm going to invite us. Does everyone have a mask, by the way? Did everyone get one? Okay, you got one? Good, very good. Just wanting to make sure. So friends, I'm going to invite us to sing the chorus again from the beautiful song, the beautiful experience of, of uh, worship and joy that we just uh, were a part of as we sing these words. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, I am living in the overflow. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, I am living in the overflow. Amen and amen. Am I right? Are we catching a bit of that spirit today? When I see people all caught up as they were in the singing and the saying about God and their experience of God's love overflowing into their lives, I find I am always ready to have my spirit lifted up. It's a time of praise that is intoxicating. And I'm not talking about the inebriation kind of intoxication here. You know that, eh? It's the intoxication of the Holy Spirit. And it is beautiful. Amen and amen. It's also something that to me tells the truth about the love of this God this awesome and beautiful God that we claim and we love and we live for, and God knows this God we will also die in one day. This truth that, in fact, is the overwhelming and overflowing nature of a love that does not discriminate Everyone and every creature gets into this God's action, if you know what I mean. And God invites us to join this party. Do I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Thank you very much. You know, truth be told, when I read the story of the transfiguration, I see what's really going on up on that mountain, everybody. Jesus invites Peter, James, and John to one amazing party that they will never forget. Dazzling bright lights. Sounds like he had a fog machine up there, eh? Or some dry ice, maybe, to get the cloudy effect of the dance floor. You, you know what I mean. Have you ever had the experience of getting out on a dance floor? Okay, be thinking about this. The lights are going, other people dancing all around you, it's a crowded floor, but you're so intoxicated by the beat of the music and the lights that are streaming and the moment that is happening that suddenly it feels like you're the only one out there on the floor, just you and the beat of the music, you can feel it in your body, and the light is streaming on you, and it's incredible. In case you haven't yet had this experience, all I can say is we're going to have to hold the dance here very soon, folks. Yep. Get, get, get a light kit in and a little dry ice, and we're going to have 
just our own little transfiguration moment right here, uh, indeed. Because it's a joy that I think Jesus knew there up on the mountain with God as the DJ, if you will. Elijah was the featured artist, Moses as well. And Peter, James, and John, those poor fellows, who knows if they just had left feet, you know? They had to get up there and dance too. They got swept up in that visionary moment as well. So much so that they never wanted to leave. That's how beautiful that moment was. That's, that's a moment we capture. God gives us to experience, yes, on the mountaintops, but also uh, in the daily, daily rounds of our lives. So thank you for those who were willing to put your masks on. I wanted to do that today because a lot of us, I think, we're, we're, we put on masks, whether we know it or not, every day. I worry that for some of us, or maybe it's all of us, we can get accustomed to wearing a mask, a mask that hides us from that same dazzling bright light that once shone on Jesus. Is anybody feeling the truth of this today? Is anybody with me on this? I know well and good that there are reasons we might want to put on a mask from time to time, absolutely. Because you know, this world can be a hard place. We get hurt along the way of our lives. We learn to protect ourselves and God knows that we need this and it's okay. But if we get too comfortable wearing a mask, it can mean we can lose touch with who we really are in the dazzling light of transfiguration, which I believe God wanted for Jesus, but I believe also God wants that for us too. Because we know God's love is just so amazing as that. It is pure, nothing other than love. It is an amazing love, not the shame and blame that too many Christians can get hung up on. Oh, that makes God's love so small, so ordinary. Not the amazing hallelujah kind of God that we know, friends, we know God is. Because that's who Jesus is. James Baldwin, the celebrated African-American author, born 100 years ago this year in August, so he born in 1924, he died in December 1987. James Baldwin was a man of his time and a man before his time. He knew something about the need to wear masks too. Growing up in Harlem, in a time when legal segregation was still the law in many U.S. states, black Americans and white Americans were certainly separate, but far from equal. Racism and poverty combined to make too many people have to wear masks. Blacks and, I suspect, white people too in those days having to wear a mask to, to fit in and to stay safe. We still know today the talk too many African heritage parents have to have with their children, specifically when it comes to interacting with law enforcement. 
and God weeps to think that skin color still might make a difference in our human relations today. And yet, the proof in the statistics tells us otherwise. James Baldwin knew about Mass too because he happened to be a gay man as well. His novels and essays explore these layers of his identity in ways that were risky and yet transformative for his audiences, both black and white. Books like The Fire Next Time or Giovanni's Room, they still make great reading today. James Baldwin, through his writing, dared to take off his masks. And he wrote this quote, love takes off the masks we fear we cannot live without and know we cannot live within. I'm going to say that one one more time here. Love takes off the masks that we fear we cannot live without and yet we know we cannot live within. Does that ring true maybe for you as it does for me? I love Baldwin's insight. This, despite the masks that we may sometimes need to put on out of protection from what can be a broken and cruel world or pieces that are maybe broken or confused within us. Despite this, God knows who we really are and wants us to be able to take off our mask. So I'm going to invite you as you feel comfortable and able to remove your masks because despite the stony roads non-white peoples have been forced to travel in a largely white society. And despite those roads that gay or now especially trans people are having to navigate in a largely straight and cisgendered world, God knows we are actually all of us living in the overflow God's got this big party going, the bright lights and intoxicating beats, and everyone is invited. It is so awesome. It is so amazing, this love. Nobody in the right mind would ever, would ever want to leave it. The good news, no, it's the great news today. God's going to love us and work with us and recognize us and accept us and challenge us and dance with us. Whether we're layered over in masks or able to take ours off and throw them away because that's who God is. That's who Jesus the Christ is. And that, my friends, is who God calls us to be. Amen. And what could we sing other than hallelujah, your love is amazing, I would invite you to stand.
be seated. Hallelujah. Bell, Queen of the Bayou. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me in Zoom land? Well, it's so good to see all them pretty faces and all them sparkly feathery masks. Reminds me of home. Reminds me of home. And I'm here to bring you the weekly announcements. They start on Wednesday which is the day after Mardi Gras, but it's also the day to start Lent. And we're all going to be here at 7.30 to have Ash Wednesday and the imposition of ashes. In other words, it's okay to get your face dirty. It's all in the name of God. Wednesday's also the deadline for the annual reports, and you're going to want to talk to Sherry if you've got content for her. The next day, Thursday the 15th, uh, Friends Food and Fun, they're going to have their planning meeting for March, and then they're going to have their beanbag toss. I don't know why they're not throwing beads. It'd make more sense if they threw beads, but they're going to have their bead bag toss instead. I hear they have a lot of fun doing that. And then at 7.30 in the evening, they have the living room on Zoom. That's a fun time, a lot of music, a lot of talk, a lot of whatever. And on Saturday at 9 o'clock, if you've got some little ladies in your life, you want to bring them over to join Girl Guides. They're looking especially for girls that are in kindergarten to grade three. And the, the adult women in your life, well, we could always use some volunteers as, as leaders. So you're going to want to talk to Patricia Tellis. I don't see her here today. She should be out there in Zoom land. Maybe not. But you're going to want to talk to her if you want to uh, join in that fun. And at 11 o'clock, we have prayer group on Zoom. And prayer group's a special time. Um, a lot of emotion, a lot of caring. You're going to want to be a part of that, too. And then next Sunday, we're back here at 11 o'clock for the worship service, and there's going to be a special guest. We're going to have Eric Haber Daly who's the executive minister at the regional council. He's uh, going to be preaching the sermon, and Reed is going to start the service, and then he's going to go off with the Sunday school, that's what I gather. And then after the service, there's going to be a pancake brunch. Um, Y'all missing out on pancakes on Pancake Tuesday? Well, there's going to be pancakes here next Sunday. It's a free will offering. So you can give what you want for, for your, your lovely meal. Um, Tuesday the 20th, there's a special meeting with Trinity's Council and Anjou's board. They got a special decision that has to be made uh, part of the National Remit One. And uh, it's a very special, important vote that has to take place. And there's... Uh, Lenten letters have gone out to Trinity folks, um, Anjou folks don't seem to get no Lenten letter, but they're going to get us an email a little later on. And it's going to have the schedule of all the services between Ash Wednesday and Easter. Um, if you don't, not, not a member right now, there's a couple that have been printed out already. You can pick them up in the north end. And I hear somebody else has an announcement too. Sabs, honey child, where are you? Good morning, everyone. Okay, take it away, Sabs. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Yes, hello, everyone. I'm Sabs, of course. As many of you know, I'm chair of council, and I have been for five years now. And unfortunately, I have reached my term end. Um, several of us on council have. And so now it is time for us to pass the torch along. 
And it's it's been a transformative time. It will continue to be a transformative time. I'm looking forward to what the future holds. But we are needing new leadership. So I'm here today um, as part of a nominations team, along with Gary Tompkins and Judy Chichola, to announce that the floor is open to nominations. If you are interested in leadership in any way, but you're not sure how it how you'll fit in, come have a chat with me. Come have a, have a chat with any of our council members. And we'll be happy to, to go over what your role could be. And if you're interested even in just finding out, coming to a couple of meetings, we're, we're happy to have you aboard so that we can have a transition of leadership within the church. Though there will need to be a fairly substantial transition uh, happening within this next year. So please come see me and I look forward to, uh, to the next leadership within the church. Thank you. Let the good times roll. Laissez les bons temps rouler. All right, well. Well, thank you, Queen of the Carnival. My goodness. All right, friends. So much happening in our life and work. It is a blessing indeed. Amen. As we reflect on God's brilliant and dazzling light of love, so God knows our actions help build up our communities as we reach out. Let us bring our gifts forward to God now to support this community of faith in which we let down our masks and invite others to come and do so as well with us. We also dedicate these gifts with these words. Let us pray. O Lord of love, bless us now as your imperfect yet dazzlingly brilliant people. By all that we do and all that we can give, help us show that Christ is light. Amen. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Julia, beautiful. Friends, let us be in prayer. Transforming one. We come to this moment in awe at the mystery that is you. Be it in a radiant cloud or a blinding light, you reveal to us the succession of grace 
that brings you ever closer to us until all we can see and hear and feel is you and that love. Be with us now as we speak and listen, as we open, as we await your word in prayer. Thank you for the joy we know today, O Lord. Thank you for the joy we know in our lives. For friends we love and care for, for family we love and care for. For fur babies we love and care for. For relationships that nourish us, be they brand new or months or years or a lifetime old. For the children we know in our lives and their laughter. Thank you for all the things that are going well for us just now. Oh God, we are grateful. We name those joys and thanksgivings, some for which we have lit candles in the silence to you. Counting our blessings, they are so many, O oh God. It is overwhelming, the blessings that we know from you. Amen. And at the same time, O oh Lord, we know so many are struggling today, perhaps with relationships, with finances, with work, with immigration issues. So many things we struggle with, O oh God, and we need you and trust you to bring each one strength. Each one of us needs the strength to keep going, to keep believing, to keep hope. For those who are not feeling well today, we ask, O oh God, you bring them and us your healing. For any who are feeling just lost and out of sorts today. Oh God, bring them, bring us your sure guidance. For those of us looking for answers today, oh God, bring us folks who will help us discern the way forward. For those who are wearing lots of masks today, not able to speak their truth, O oh God, you come and be our voice, won't you? For those living under oppression today, God, you come and be our liberator. For the many who know the violence of war around the world, O oh God, come, we need you to be our peacemaker. Many need to know that you are there today and every day, O oh God, the one who will be our, our anchor, who will be our light, the one who will hold us fast always. Hear us as we offer the prayers of concern, some of which we have lit candles again in the silence. God, again, we lift up the family of Diane, Davy, Plaskin, Minerva, and Nick, and Donna, all those that will be mourning and celebrating uh, Diane's life 
this coming week, be with each one. We think of our friend Lorna McIntyre, who has now moved uh, from St. Mary's Hospital to the Polish home, uh, room 133. Lorna would always love a visit. Her phone is reconnected, her old number uh, to receive phone calls. We thank you for all those who have supported Lorna through this transition and all of us who will continue to support her uh, moving forward in a new place. Oh God, we thank you for each name on our prayer list, the situations that you know, and that we know as we pray for each one during the week, it will make a difference for them and for us as well. Thank you for this ministry of praying for those who are entrusted to this community uh, in love and healing. All these things we lift up to you into your dazzling, brilliant light on this Transfiguration Sunday. Oh God, thank you for hearing our prayers, for receiving them, uh, and for helping us solve the problems and move beyond what we must move beyond with your love and care fully behind us. For these things, we give you thanks this day give you our praise. Amen. Our final hymn in an extended uh, Black History Month. We'll be going into the first uh, week of March uh, with these themes, uh, special things still to come. Lift every voice and sing. Some consider it to be sort of the, the cultural and national anthem for uh, many people of African heritage let us rise and sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and
friends, this is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will not offer to God offerings that cost us nothing. Go in peace to love and to serve. We will seek peace and pursue it. In the name of the Trinity of love, God in community, holy and one. Amen. And we sing. Let us go.